Um, I'm the CEO of Making Science uh, to give you who we are, basically. So we are an integrated uh, marketing and technology company, which is kind of an interesting animal because we have like um, 80 software. We are in total 250 people here in Madrid, and we have 80 software developers, data engineers, and data scientists, 80 uh, creative and designers, and 80 which are marketing specialists, right? So we have access to a lot of uh, a lot of data, and uh, well, since we have the marketing inside, we are capable of um, of uh, basically putting in in production a lot of uh, use cases, you know, and actually measure the models. Of course, we are able to build all the ATLs and all the data pipes and, and build a lot of models, and we are able to test a lot of things because we have basically the the full value chain inside, right? And today, I basically, I'm going to be talking to you about all the AdTech and MarTech ecosystem, right? And how you can, we are uh, building uh, different models, you know, of course, of advanced analytics and, and a lot of machine learning models to do, uh, to do activation, right? So as I said, you know, we are uh, 250 people and we integrated a few companies and we provide all the services to SMO, you know, and again, so we do it from software developer to to uh, digital marketing, to SEO, to design, to UX, UI, and we are able to go to do very quickly everything with, yeah, and we work with very large clients. And we have more, more than 120 clients, uh, sp uh, specifically in the, in the area of uh, advertising technology and marketing technology, right? And I, I would say, like, in terms of, I, I start, basically, I'm a, a computer science engineer, and I finished a long time ago in the school, and I, I, my thesis was on artificial intelligence in 1993, and was very interesting. I was working about the expert systems and all those kind of things on the first neural networks. And um, it's interesting, like, the new wave of, uh, of uh, AI and advanced analytics is coming from the UX, right? The UX and the how we can inter interact with users, and... The reason, the basic reason is because that's where all the data is created. Yeah? Of course, there is a lot of uh, much more areas where a lot of data is created, like e IoT and many other things, but the, the interaction of companies and of consumers with companies in the different assets and with the different platforms is basically which is creating the big, uh, the big uh, um, wave of change. And of course, with the Netflix, with the Spotify, with the Amazon, with the Google, and so on, right? And our thesis when we work with, uh, with our clients is like the shift, you know, from uh, traditional companies to companies that are doing the, the um, digital transformation is moving very quickly what we call smart companies. And uh, if you were measuring a traditional company but the size of their uh, fixed assets, of their traditional assets, you know, how many houses in my balance sheet, you know, how many plants I have, how much machinery I have, uh, Digital company would be measured by how many, many intangible assets you have, how much software you have, how many servers you have, how many web pages you have, how many apps, how many users, what is your monthly average user. The smart companies are going to be measured by something which is different, which is, uh, you know, how much data are you processing, how many models you have active, you know, in the different parts of your value chain from your supply, from uh, in your, your value chain, from the supply chains to your warehouses to how you interact with consumers, right? And that's what's going to change. Uh, that's what's going to define what are uh, the winner companies of the future. You know, how many models you have active, how much data are you processing, and how much data are you processing, right? And that's basically what we do. Of course, you, uh, you can have data in all, in all the parts of the organization. Uh, we focus on the marketing and sales data. And it's interesting because uh, marketing and sales, if your predictive model doesn't work very well, it's not a crisis, right? It's not like you are predicting. The problem of having a, a, a false negative is not a problem, right? Uh, because uh, if you have an accuracy better than 70% is good, 80% is good. So it's a very interesting field for testing as well and be able to iterate very quickly with the data, with the models, and, and with the consumer, right? So, so it's not by coincidence, as I was saying before, like the, all this revolution is starting by uh, co consumers interacting with companies. One of the reasons is because uh, the problem of failing is not big, right? If you are doing a model for an Airbus to fly or you are doing a model for a satellite to send to the moon, if the model is not good, 
uh, it's a big problem in the, in marketing and sales. It's not a problem. Maybe a CMO is fired, but that happens every day. So it's not a big it's not a big problem, right? And the reason of uh, the very fast uh, pace of uh, progress in that field is the the fact that we are able to iterate very quickly with the data, and that there is a lot of data which is produced. If this is uh, probably you are familiar with this. This is the McKinsey uh, research, you know, of the McKinsey Institute of uh, the opportunities of uh, of advanced analytics and uh, machine learning in terms of what are the areas of, uh, of, um, of the companies where AI and advanced analytics are going to have bigger impact. And you see like the biggest one is marketing and sales, which is interesting. So it's, a, it's the area where we focus and uh, it's a very big area. And the other one is supply chain management and manufacturing. And you have all the different areas of the company like risk, uh, service operation, pro development, right? And it's not uh, a coincidence as well because Companies do spend mon a lot of money on marketing. So if you are on um, sales, so if you are able to optimize uh, um, advanced analytics and machine learning is going to help you to make better prediction and optimize models, you are going to be able to save a lot of money. right? And that's where we focus. And I'm going to be telling you about different things we are doing right, in the, in the ecosystem. Right? Also, this is a, a, the Gartner CMO survey that is published every year. And what basically Gartner asks, uh, the CMOs uh, in the US is basically where are they putting their dollars, right? And uh, you see like uh, in 2019 and 18, and we have the new one, but it's not here, but basically the area where, where they are investing more money is in the marketing technology. So they are gonna be spending less money in people, in agencies, they are gonna be spending less money in media, and they are gonna be spending less money in, in people, internal people that is going to execute the campaign. So they also see the opportunity that uh, automation and be able to use the data uh, to, uh, to get better return on investment on their, on their dollars, and it's happening. Interesting thing is what's going on in the advertising and marketing technology space. Maybe you are familiar with this with these slides. This is the the Luma uh, Martech, Chief Martech view of the ecosystem. And basically what you can see is the different players in the, adver in the uh, uh, advertising technology and marketing technology, uh, different companies that are doing things. So you can see here like companies that are doing mobile marketing, companies that are doing mobile apps, creative optimization, video ad management, search ad management, social media, land uh, landing page microsites, blogs. So all the different technologies that you might use if you are a company, a CMO that wants to to go to the market and you need a, a marketing strategy, a landing page, a campaign, and so on, right? So the interesting thing of things is like all these are platforms and systems, and all systems generate a lot of data, right? So there is a lot of opportunity. But I would also ask you to focus on, on the date. So this is 2011, right? And you already can see a, a, a crowded ecosystem, right? So at this time, all these systems and all these platforms were uh, generating a lot of data. And, uh, and this is what happened in 2016, right? So the ecosystem gets much more complicated, and it's probably not by chance also. I mean, the fact that there are more and more platforms that uh, companies are using uh, and so on, it, it demands from you much more other platforms, right? So again, these are, these are uh, uh, systems, you know, that are generating data. And in this one, you can see, like, organized by areas, like adver advertising and promotion, content and experience, social relationship, commerce, data, and data management, right? So more and more platforms, more and more data. And this is the MarTech 5000, right? So this is 2018, which is, it makes it's a nonsense, I would say, right? So uh, 5,000 companies is a lot of companies, especially imagine doing a few uh, RFPs to understand what, what they do, right? So I mean, uh, why is this is happening? Uh, it, this is happening also because of the previous slide of McKinsey. There is a lot of dollars, so there is a lot of money to be made if you are uh, doing advanced analytics, uh, data management, and machine learning, and machine learning, machine learning uh, projects, right? So big opportunity in terms of if, you, if, if a company which is focused on that, which is our case, right? But at the same time, marketing problems are the same, right? If you ask a, a CMO what do he wants to do, I mean, I would say, how can I sell more? What is my optical media mix? Uh, how is the consumer journey of my, cons uh, my customers? Would this visitor buy or not? What products do I recommend my consumers? If you were back to uh, 1960 and ask a CMO what were her problems, it would be the same problems, right? The thing is like right now the tools and the solutions are, are different, but there are new questions, right? Because, of, because we have all these platforms that I was explaining before, 
Uh, there are new questions, there are new things that you can do, for example, should I bid for that visitor, you know, so because now the visitor is, is a visitor which is visiting your website or is using your application and you have all that, that data and the question is should I, should I show an ad to that consumer or not? And that was not a question that you could ask uh, 20 years ago, right? Because when you were doing, for example, television, everybody would see the same ad. Right now, when you are in an online platform, you can decide based on data and based on predictive models whether you should show an ad to that user or whether you should bid for that user in the future or if it, what is the uh, uh, propensity of that consumer to buy a product, right? Or what will be my conversion rate next month, right? So, I mean, the, the platform sees in one side, the, the problems of the CMOs is the same like it, it's been in the past, but at the same time, the platforms are, are going to be helping you to, to solve new problems, right? So, uh, thinking a bit what, what uh, uh, in, uh, let's say, any, any, any client is doing, what do they use information for? And what are the kind of uh, use cases or problems that we are solving for them? And basically, let's think about how uh, in marketing and sales you use information. And basically, I mean, it's not marketing and sales, it's everything. Basically, we use information for three things, right? To understand what happened, to understand what's going on, and to, un to, un and to try to understand what will happen. The what will happen in the past was, you know, a hunch, you know, basically, hmm, I think my, my, my smell says that this is going to be like that. So the what will happen was a very dangerous territory in the past, you know, and basically you have all the, all the models built on your, in your brain out of experience, right? And the good ones were able to predict the future. And uh, the what is happening was also a problem in the past because the data was not ready. I remember like 20 years ago, with business objects that the, 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 the data warehouse, you know, you, the, the cycles were a month, you know, it was a month <laughs> before you have all the data in, uh, at the beginning, right? So what is happening, it's been a problem up to, let's say, 10 or 10 years, but now it's a, it's a reality that you can't really work on what is happening, right? And what happened, you know, has been traditionally the domain of the, of the decision making, right, of the information, because you could see what, was, what were your sales in the past, what was the segmentation of consumers in the past, because you have all the data and reporting and data coming from different, from different data sources, right? So, in terms of what would you do, you would do reports and dashboards, right? The past is being, let's say, a, a, a problem which has been solved by, by technology in the different waves of technology. The thing is now you have much more granularity, right? And because you have much more granularity on the data, you are going to be able to understand more things, get more insights, and maybe probably make uh, better decisions. The, the what is happening, I think there is a big revolution right now in terms of what the things what you can do if you are working in marketing and sales problems because you have a lot of um, data pipes coming to different systems and you can design things that are going to be able to react real time to, uh, to consumers and be able to make decisions and to take actions on what's going on. And that uh, also, but the big revolution is what will happen, right? Which, if we combine the prediction with the, with the real time, then you can be ahead of the game of, of, of your competition, right? And we see what Google and Facebook and Amazon do in terms of when you are able to combine the real time with a good, very uh, good uh, predictive modeling, what you can do for consumers in terms of Everything. We will go uh, later into different use cases. What you can do in terms of optimizing the user experience, in, in terms of, of uh, optimizing where you spend your dollars, and so on. The reality is like all this data, like most of the data is still unactivated, right? I mean, we do some surveys of our clients, you know, what do they do? They use their data from coming from all these platforms. And even many times they don't use the basic reporting capabilities of all those platforms, right? So even though we are generating a lot of data, so very few, uh, very little data is uh, still in marketing and sales analyzed and very, uh, and very, very few little, very little data activated, right? And again, you know, the problem is like, it's a lot of, right now, where we see in a lot of our clients uh, is like, uh, there is like uh, the hype in terms of the data is a bit down because they're spending, okay, we, I think they're spending a lot of money in different platforms, right? And the return on investment is not getting to me, right? Because basically it's a lot of complexity and uh, you only generate value, as you can see, in the, when you uh, do an activation of that platform, either with a decision or with a predicting model, which is, which is online. So, just with the introduction, let's focus on, on mm, the different data sources and the different things we can do in, in marketing operations, right? So ideally, I mean, when you think about the uh, consumer journey of a consumer, let's say a consumer that you don't know at all in, uh, in historically, you know, you can have 
basically a, a consumer which is around that you want to target. And uh, still you have uh, offline and online uh, 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 impact or opportunity to see, to impact that customer. You can see uh, below you have the offline, or above you have the, the online. And your customer will follow a, a process of considering your product from the awareness, consideration phase, purchase, service, and then on the fidelization, right? And in theory, with in online, we should be able to track everything we do with them, right? And we are going to see right there uh, some examples of how we can do that. Because in, with the online platforms, with the ad server, you can track from the very, 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 very first time you touch a consumer with an ad, with the first ad, with an impression of the ad. There are some limitations now with GDPR. But basically, you should be able to track what happens with that consumer from the very first ad you saw him to understand if you saw him another second ad, if he visited your website, if he bought, then if he came back, because you have your analytics platform, if you saw him another ad, and so on. So you can see in below, uh, it's a, a problem that could be solved, because basically, in terms, uh, you have data from everything the customer did, right? So it's a known problem. It's a lot of data, but it's a problem that you can solve, you know? By different techniques, right? Which was a problem that in marketing was unsolvable in the past, only using like a very, gener very generic uh, statistics, right? Because in theory, from the very, from the very impact you have to, to that user, you could create a profile of that user, with a pro give him a profile ID in one of your platforms, right? And from there, make different uh, predictive models work for you, right? So, I mean, the accuracy of the models, of course, is gonna be get improving as, as, as you get much more data from that consumer, and he visits you more, as you show him more ads. But eventually, you can create a propensity to buy your product from the very first interaction. And then moving on, the churn probability, the, of course, it will be going to be zero right at the beginning, because it's not your customer yet. right? Then you can understand you know, what is their next best product, product recommendation from them. And as any a new touch points and new data is coming around that consumer, you, the different predictive models should be able to optimize you know, what kind of products are you showing that, that client. So in terms of if we compare 30 years ago of uh, what is the kind of things you can do, it's basically you can do everything, right? Because it's coming from zero data to basically all the data, right? Or today, for uh, if you are especially for online, you can you can approach uh, the challenge of uh, doing marketing and sales, assuming that that you have all the data, which is typically a very good thing if you're solving any mathematical problem, right? Having all the data helps you. So, what is the ecosystem, right? So basically, I've divided here like three main blocks of platforms, right? That uh, you can use to basically are platforms that are, are generating logs and generating data, and eventually you can uh, you can create models on top. First, you have the ad tech ecosystem, right? Which basically you have first party, second party, and third party data, right? And we are going to see which kind of platforms you have there, right? Okay. Then you have the marketing technology ecosystem, which basically it's CRM or marketing automation on those kind of platforms, right? Which basically mostly is first party data. And then you have the internal system that you've always had that you eventually can connect to, uh, can connect to, the, to the other systems, right? Of course, in terms of with GDPR especially, now the um, uh, first party data is okay. I mean, it's easier in terms to be uh, uh, lawful uh, in terms of complying with the with the law and, and tracking uh, having all the information. Second party and third party is getting is getting complicated. And in fact, uh, the third pla like Google, Facebook, Amazon are more and more cutting the availability of second party and third party data in terms of what you can do in terms of uh, in terms of the data. Right? There was a big cut from Facebook last year in terms of the kind of segments they would offer you, like uh, in terms of uh, uh, third party data. And there is being a new cut from Google this in terms of what kind of what can you do with the second party and, and third party data in the platforms, right? So to give you a more dive in of what kind of platforms you have in the different categories, right? So in the ad tech, you are gonna have uh, your ad server, right? Which basically tracks everything you do with a consumer, right? With the impressions, with the clicks uh, in all the different platforms, in social, in search, in display, right? And all that interaction are get locked in the, into, the, into the database, right? So you have completely tra traceability of, uh, of a consumer. Then you have the search and social engines. You have the demand side platforms. 
Then you have the DMPs, right? And you have a few of the guys there. You know that kind of data that is generating. All that data you can collect and you can attach to an ID, you know, of, of course, anonymous of a user, and you are able to be able to track. So ba with that, basically, with that tech, you are able to control everything which happens outside of your domain, right? If you define, like your company, your domain is your website or your application, right? So everything which happens outside of that world, you can track with the ad tech ecosystem, but you can track everything, right? You can track everything what is happening, and, and you can attach all that information to a specific ID, it can be a cookie, and so on, right? Then you have the MarTech uh, ecosystem, you know, with your CMS, your testing, your CRM, your information internally, but you can track also what happens in your domain, in your application, in your website, and there are ways to connect that information, to connect the external ID of your user, of your user outside with the internal ID when they're visiting your website or your app, right? And then you have your, have your internal system, right? That there are also ways to, where you basically can map the different IDs of the different platforms, right? So with all this information, you can, uh, you can basically dump all this information into a common database, right? So you are be able to track end-to-end -end the life of a consumer from the very first ad impression that it had with you to the very first visit in your website to the ver very first time it bought your product to the recommendation you give to him and basically when it eventually it's not, it, it's not your, your client anymore, right? So in terms of uh, optimization problem is very good, right? Because if you have a lot of data, probably you're gonna be able to, uh, to, fix, uh, to fix the problem, right? So in terms of the platforms, and there are the typical suspects of, of things you can do, you know, like different ad servers providers, different social uh, engines providers, different DSP providers, some of them there is integration of them right now, the change name and so on, some DMP, uh, DMP providers, right? So if you have a strategy of integrating all that information and connect it to a single ID, uh, basically you are able to track everything which happens outside of your, of your website, right? Same things with your MarTech the, uh, tools, right? Where basically you are able also, then you are, let's say, the, all the interactions which happen with your consumer when you are inside your application or your, on your website, you can connect as well, all of them. So you can understand, you can do analytics, you can do predictive model on what happens within your app or within your, or within your website, right? And the last one, what happens in your internal systems, you know that also you can connect, uh, you can connect that, that information with, uh, with uh, first, with the, what happens in your uh, marketing technology systems and then with your advertising systems, right? So, and then you start, uh, what I was saying at the beginning, activating the data, right? If you think w right now, let's say we, with consumers where we have this set up, Basically, we are getting, I don't know, gigabytes or terabytes of data, you know, because, for example, I mean, for us, we are very, we are very experts in the uh, Google Analytics and in the Adobe ecosystems, right? So we are, in terms of the ad tech and MarTech, so we have a lot of clients and a lot of integration and a lot of use cases, which are very specific to Adobe and to, and to Google Analytics. But basically, in, every, in, in all the situations we have, we are getting, like, I don't know, gigabytes, terabytes of data every day, which are which are um, uh, feeding the different, uh, the different advanced analytics models and the different uh, predictive models, right? So what you can do with this information, and basically we build a platform that does all this in fact, right? So if you think about in this, uh, in this uh, uh, slide, the different phases of your go-to-market in marketing, right? So basically, you have a digital marketing phase, right? Where basically you are launching campaigns and you are launching ads to people, right? Then those consumers will interact with your digital assets, you know, your web app, uh, your application, uh, your, uh, your web, right? Then eventually you will sell something and you will deliver something to that consumer. And when you sell something, you go into the, into the loyalty phase, right? So with all these data sets, that we are collecting with from the ad server, from the DSPs, from the DMPs, from the th CRMs, from the marketing automation tool, and connect it to all of them, but you can be list lots of uh, models, right? And a few of them that you can do. And all these models, if you activate them, as we said, I mean, of course, you can make decisions on them, but if you are, acti you are able to activate them uh, online with APIs, you are gonna get a lot of savings of money. Right? 
So what you can do in digital marketing for bidding strategies, you know, for example, you can do that on the platforms, you can do lookalikes, right? You can do a smart ads, which basically is getting all the data about the interaction of the consumer to create automatically ads for those consumers, right? So if I know that you visit a specific web page, then the ad I'm going to show you is going to have the text automatically, which is going to do. And if you show a different image, I can create that image for you as well in real time. You can do lead scoring. Propensity, right? You can do purchase propensity to buy a certain product or to revisit the web page again. You can do scorers of cookies, right? In terms of uh, to understand if that cookie is going to revisit you or is going to buy, and you can do personalization. You can do clustering and you can do dynamic pricing, right? So those are, and the good thing is like since these platforms are a standard, those models are quite a standard as well, right? Because when you get uh, the Adobe data set, and when you get the Google Analytics 360 data set, and when you get the double click data set, and when you get the cracks data set with the API, the, uh, I mean, there are some things which are non standard, but most of the things are standard. So the models, the ability to put in place the models very quickly is, uh, is easy, I would say. If you go into your website, you know, with all the data which is collected, you can do, of course, Pro Recommender, you can do MBA, you can do Pro Scoring, you can do Dynamic Pricing, you can do cat Category Listing Order. The good thing is like with all the, basically with the information, if you use Adobe Analytics or you use Google Analytics, with the information that you have in those systems, you can do, you can go very quickly to 80% of what you could get into building a good predictive model for a product recommender or for a cookie scoring, right? Then if you go to sales delivery, right? So you can do demand prediction, you can do stocks, logistic, uh, product enrichment, you can do alerts, and we have different use cases of these things, right? And when you go to loyalty, you can do uh, also MBA, you can do personalization, you can do refill, and you can do, you can do predictions, right? So what is the difference be when you have all these uh, platforms, which are online versus what happened in the past, is that basically the data is coming continuous to you, right? And uh, I'm an engineering background. What's happening with the data compared to the other systems is similar. It's more like an industrial process, right? Uh, rather than an, a traditional IT process, right? When you think about a chemical plant or you're using about uh, an electric plant, right? What happens is that the flow is real, right? And you need, to, uh, you need to be able to manage the process of the different machines and the flow of materials. So basically the data products are s more similar to a uh, industrial than which is to a uh, traditional IT systems, which is more like even Based. And I think it's, that's going to be a, one of the big changes which is happening right now when you are doing about activating uh, predictive models, right? Because all, all these platforms are generating the data in real time in a standard way, so you are able to normalize them and fit the data to the to the different models and activate them in real time because the nature of the platform is online, right? So you don't need to do a lot of pr data processing. So then activation, so this is case, for example, this is journey optimization, right? So when you have all the data of uh, coming from, in this case, from the Google or Facebook of your analytics, so what is the journey in terms of how your consumers are buying your product? So CPC, so we start the journey, CPC is uh, cost per click, so basically they click uh, in a Google source, or they went to organic, or they went to other source on TPRG, so if, once you have built the model, basically you can understand the attribution and the different models, and basically the data, you have it in BigQuery, and you have it in another, in another, uh, in another database, and the models are feeding continuously and optimized and optimize, uh, continuously, right? So other thing we done, uh, for example, we, we, we published this in this case with, uh, with Bertie Germany, right? So well, coming back to the beginning, why uh, CMOs are spending money on Martech and on data is because it's going to save them money, right? So in this case, in Germany, what we did is, uh, 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 of course, an insurer spends a lot of money doing marketing and remarketing. So remarketing now when the banners are following you, right? And booking.com, when they, the hotels keep following you. And so if uh, you already bought the, the hotel or if you don't want to go to that destination anymore, uh, it's a lot of waste if that uh, company is showing you more ads, so it's spending money. So in this case, what we do is, uh, we will, uh, 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 by the way, I said we are very expert in Adobe and in, in, in GA360 and all our models go in Google Cloud Platform, right? We build, we build everything on TensorFlow and so on. So in this case, what we collect is, we collect all the, in this case, the data sources is the Google Analytics 360 source, the ad server source, the Google AdWords source, like four or five sources, you know, coming online from the different platforms. 
the model uh, it originally was a neural network, then we done XGBoost, but anyhow, again, in marketing, uh, accuracy is not, is not a big problem. The important thing here is like the model is running real time, so every time a new visitor visits the website or the app, it gets a score of uh, uh, probability to purchase the product, right? And uh, what happens is that that information is goes back automatically to all the buying platforms, right? It goes back to Google AdWords, it goes back to Facebook, it goes back to... So what happens is like automatically you can you stop and start campaigns and stop and start bidding based on the purchase propensity of that user, right? And of course, the data is coming, the model keeps feeding and, and we, we need, we keep retraining, retraining the model with more data and with more hits for, for, for that consumer. So the results, so basically we, we, we save first 50% of investment, right, right away. So they were investing 200,000 per month. So the following month they were spending 100,000 and the sales were the same, okay? So when you think about what is the ROI of investing in marketing and sales, it's very important. From investing 200,000 to invest 100,000 the following month to selling the same thing, selling the same amount of, uh, of products. So what they did then is, okay, since they had the budget, they invested the same 100,000 in other strategies, so in they end up selling 20% uh, more, right? So this is probably is in, in the web, in with Google if you want, right? Um, we've done this model for with more than 20 clients now, and it's showing the, the same results, right? So basically applying these data models to, uh, to uh, uh, optimizing marketing is saving, is saving all the times between 30 and 50% of investment, right? And then another one we just published, this is, what, this is in Spain also in, with Altamira. In this case was with Facebook, right? So it's the same process. So basically what we did is, uh, in this case you need to, uh, the, data, the data processing because Facebook doesn't allow you to pass information in the, uh, uh, passing you information uh, with an API, you need to do it on, on in session in the, in, the, in the web or in the, or in the, in the application. In this case, we use the kind, uh, same of model. We combine here uh, using uh, purchase propensity city of visitors, but also um, uh, uh, using lookalikes, uh, using uh, Facebook models in terms of, of lookalikes. And in this case, we reduce the cost per action of Altamira 25%, right? So if they were getting a visitor to houses uh, for 100, they were basically getting the same one for, for 75, right? So as you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm finishing basically now. I mean, uh, marketing and sales, it's a very interesting area in terms of building models because the MarTech and the AdTech revolution is happening. There is a lot of data. And again, it's not mission critical and there is a lot of money. And uh, basically that's what we're doing and uh, that's all. Thank you very much. I don't know if you have any question. No questions?